A direct monetary subsidy to selected Australian manufacturing industries should be rejected for many reasons. Firstly, market mechanisms show that resources will naturally flow throughout the economy to areas of production that are efficient and competitive. A subsidy, however, does not allow for this efficient allocation of resources. A subsidy is primarily used to protect failing industries from dissipating within the economy. This dissipation, however, is necessary so that these misallocated resources may be freed up and moved towards areas of production that are more efficient and competitive. If this is allowed to occur, there will be sustained increases in employment as well as the continued growth of these thriving industries and thus the growth of the Australian economy. This idea of not protecting the domestic economy but rather letting natural market forces dictate where resources are allocated to is advocated by none other than the great David Ricardo. In the eyes of Ricardo, if a country is to truly gain from trade, it must trade where it has a comparative advantage. A subsidy, however, does not allow this process to occur. A subsidy will lead to sustained increases in production without any increases in efficiency, competitiveness and innovation. And thus, there will be a misallocation of resources to an industry that is unable to thrive and grow in the long term. This idea is amplified through the article, the Australian government should pick towns, not industries, to fund. This article dwells on the idea that the government, instead of subsidising failing manufacturing industries in Australia, should rather create incentives for thriving industries to relocate to regional centres. The article focuses on the idea that the benefits attained from a new, growing regional centre of economic activity far outweigh the short-run benefits attained from subsidising a failing manufacturing industry. Lastly, for the future of the Australian manufacturing industry. The last thing this failing industry needs is a subsidy. The CSIRO have researched deep into the issue and their findings are perfectly summated into the article the Australian manufacturing industries are not dying, they are evolving. The article tells us, this, tells us that these Australian manufacturing industries are going through a time of global technological innovation and structural change. The last thing these Australian manufacturing industries need is to be protected from these changes. Instead, the Australian manufacturing industries need to evolve, evolve over the next 20 years and adapt production processes as well as focusing on science and technology in order to successfully innovate and improve production processes. If there is a direct monetary subsidy in place on the Australian manufacturing industry, the industries will not feel the need to innovate and improve production processes and change production processes and thus inevitably crumble in the face of new low-cost foreign competition. In conclusion, it is beyond clear the benefits to the Australian economy of not having a subsidy on the Australian manufacturing industries. But what should also be clear is the negatives on the Australian manufacturing industries themselves when a subsidy is in place. Thus, the decision to reject any monetary subsidy on the Australian manufacturing industries should be transparent and agreed upon by all.